and Tommy Kester. All right, welcome in, everybody, to Sports Daily on a Tuesday. Glad to be here with you. Big day, big show today. A uh, lot of fun stuff to get to on the show today. Tommy will join us in just a little bit. Jad Chambers is man in that KFH hotline for us today, and it is a big day uh, to listen in and get a chance to win. we got a really cool prize we'll give away today along with all of our other giveaways that we do each and every morning here on KFH on Sports Daily all across the Odyssey family. We're enjoying our great cups of Prairie Fire coffee. Appreciate the folks at Prairie Fire for providing that for us. Boy, we've got some fun stuff to do today. So, we are going to uh, give away today on the show. Well, all week, oh, let me let me start here. All week, we're going to give away Wichita Wind Surge, four packs of tickets. We've got opening day coming this weekend. Uh, we are really excited about baseball coming, uh, some of the new stuff coming out there at the ballpark. Here's the best part, though. Today's winner, only today's winner, we'll give away uh, these four packs all week long, but only today you'll have an opportunity to not only win that four pack of tickets, but to win a chance to throw out the first pitch of a game this year. Now, I don't think we have the details on which specific game you'll throw out the first pitch to, do we, Jad? We will. We know that you'll throw out a first pitch. Um, and so you'll get a four pack in that opportunity. This is going to be cool. We're well, going to do correct. this for yeah. you today. Yeah, so we'll we'll have that for you. We're not going to give those away just yet, so hang tight for that. Uh, but we'll let you know. Just stay tuned in, and when we announce that, uh, we're going to do that. We're going to get you a first pitch opportunity. We might even bring you on the air and and uh, chat it up for just a second about that first pitch. Uh, that's nerve-wracking stuff there, but you'll have that opportunity to win later in today's show. Uh, so four packs of wind surge tickets coming all week long here on Sports Daily. Looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to give away some HTO. Uh, we'll give away some iced tea and some coffee from HTO. That will come a little later in the show as well. So lots of chances to win some cool stuff today. Uh, be sure and stay tuned in. Keep that KFH hotline handy. It is open for your calls throughout the day today, by the way. Whatever it is that you want to chime in on. Uh, the Royals, an interesting game last night and a loss. We'll get into that. Some positive signs again. And, you know, at some point we're going to stop taking positive signs from losses. But we're seeing them. Uh, so we'll we'll touch on that. Uh, we had incredible basketball played last night, at least in, you know, I didn't get to watch USC UConn. Uh, it was, it was pretty tight. It was a, it was an entertaining game. I'm sure I was able to watch Iowa LSU and we'll get into some of this here as we open things up today. Um, hey, let, let, I, I got to I got to just, it's not get something off my chest. I, I just like, Iowa LSU last night was fantastic basketball, period. It wasn't fantastic women's basketball. It wasn't, we have to compare this to the men's tournament. We, we are way past all that. That was just an incredible basketball game, period. End of the statement. Doesn't need any context. Doesn't need any, you know, other filler or adjectives, man, that was, that was high level star filled basketball that was made for March. That's it. Let's stop trying to, you know, justify or oh, you got to watch this or the women's game. No, that was, it, it's all great. Like all the basketball's great this time of year. And let's just have that because that game last night was as good as anything we've seen in either tournament. And that's what we expected. And the fact that we've reached that expectation in the women's game does speak to the growth. But, man, we're there. Like, it's not that the women's game grow is, is growing. or It's that the women's game is there. Selling out arenas. Ratings through the, through the roof. It was awesome. You had the, the sport's two biggest stars. Two of the biggest stars in any college athletic endeavor with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. I mean, that was, that was exactly what we wanted. Caitlin Clark goes ballistic for 41 points, hitting all the threes, doing that, getting the revenge. Angel Reese with the trash talk and the crown on the bench. Like, all of it is so good. Let's just appreciate it for the high-level basketball that it was. And, and it is as good as anything we've seen in either tournament this year. That's what's fantastic, and that's where it is. 
I, I think people here, generally speaking, love women's basketball anyway. We have some of the best high school girls basketball played anywhere in the country with some of the great athletes anywhere. You come up and you watch this stuff. We saw Kansas State selling out arenas this year where they had their run. KU selling out arenas last year in their NIT run. Like, we're there. Like, we can stop with the, oh, you you know, guilt trips and everything. No, everybody. I, I was leaving I was leaving the, the office yesterday right when that game started. And everybody was, like, stopped and watching, just like any great basketball game. You couldn't have more star power. I mean, you couldn't have more stars, star power. It was it was perfect. I was perfect. I mean, maybe it wasn't perfect if you wanted to see LSU win, but it was perfect for it gave us everything we wanted. It was high scoring, and you know, probably could have played a little better defense, certainly, uh, which, you know, it's just a stylistic thing. Iowa and Caitlin Clark love to shoot the lights out, and LSU was getting forced to probably play a little faster pace than they wanted to. But I love it. I, I, you know, we get Iowa headed to the Final Four again. You've got the sport's biggest star. And Angel Reese is right there with Caitlin Clark. But Clark's there. And by the way, in the other game, it looked like it was great. And remember, before Caitlin Clark took the sport and Angel Reese, it was it was Buckets, right? It was Paige Beckers who was leading the way. So I, I'm glad they're there. And it's going to be more star power there. But it, it, let's just appreciate it. It doesn't we we can stop with the conversations and all of these other things about, well, is it women's? No, it's both. It's awesome. That was great basketball. Rick says LSU had 26 shot attempts in the third quarter. Uh, most men's teams don't get 26 attempts and a half. I, I would counter Rick with who cares? Were you not entertained? And if not, that's fine. But for most of us, that was a level of basketball that was a blast to watch. And yeah, the pace of that game intensified right out of the gates, right? It was it was very clear how that game was going to get played immediately. But this is what I mean when I talk about NIL being a great thing for the sport. You, you got to look at how hyped up that game was. I, I don't know what the, you know, what the, the viewership or the ratings were or anything, but they're going to be high. They're selling out arenas everywhere. I heard somebody say on CBS Sports Radio over the weekend that there were something like six times more Final Four tickets on the women's side sold than the men. Like, we're there. We It's not growth. It's not anything else. And this is – and I bring all this up because I think about the future of college basketball with NIL 1, but with the Big 12 and what it's trying to do in the growth of these, like, revenue streams for the conferences and everything else, I, I do think that there is a major – booster to the league like and i and i think about this for the big 12 all the time we know the big 12 is trying to intensify basketball right we the big 12 wants basketball to be a big part of what it does i think so eventually it can separate basketball away from football and get a separate tv deal which would be fantastic and i'm i'm telling you that we are to the point now where the women's brand is going to bring a ton of revenue to these universities. We're seeing it. Just look at the market value of the sport's biggest stars. NIL, some of the best and, and most highly regarded NIL athletes, most of them are women right now because it's a huge untapped audience. It's like if we think about this in dollars and cents and you're trying to think of how are these schools going to generate the money and generate the revenue to – you know, eventually have to pay these players. This is how, right? You have now something that's gone wildly untapped financially in the past. You're telling me you can't separate that out and find a lucrative TV deal? I mean, it's going to be awesome for these schools and these leagues. And I do think the Big 12 will be at the forefront of it, trying to separate that out. You're talking about now, yeah, we've got this football brand that's incredible. And the Big 12 is. It's really good. It's not what the others are, but it's right there. Now you're going to come back and say, but we also want to give you this basketball deal. We've got the greatest men's league in the country, top to bottom, right? Tournament didn't play itself out that way this year. That's fine. But top to bottom, that's the most competitive league in the country. Two what things if I league, can add to this, Jacob. Yeah, I mean, think about that, Jad. If, if, the, if the women's game in the Big 12 specifically elevates to the same level as the men. Oh, yeah. You got a cash cow coming. Absolutely. And. Just two things I can add. First of all, huge congratulations to the Hutch ladies. 
win the uh, NJCAA yeah. tournament uh, in uh, Casper, Wyoming. Incredible. Have them. Yep. Incredible the year. Oh, yeah. Well, unbeaten. I mean, never never got beat this year. Went all the way. Uh, fantastic. And second thing, Jacob, have you ever have you ever watched any of the PWHL games yet? Professional no. Women's Hockey League. I have not. I don't watch much of any hockey, Jad, but no, I haven't. It is a fantastic game to watch. It really is. Right now, they've only got the, the six original teams that uh, have started up the league, but they've been playing games and a lot of women's hockey up until the PWHL, uh, like an Olympic hockey or college level hockey, they don't really they don't really check. They don't really hit. Um, they've always kind of held off on that for women's hockey. PWHL throws all that out. They they check. They hit. They hit hard. They move fast. It's a fast paced, hard hitting game. It's really excellent to watch. I've I've been enjoying games off and on. Uh, you'll see a lot of them on YouTube uh, here and there. They but they've they've been putting the whole whole games on YouTube, and they've been really a great watch. Well, it makes sense. <laughs> I, I think sometimes we forget, like you, you start at the base level. Are we as parents, are we any less nuts about our kids sporting events, whether we have a son or a daughter? I don't think we are like the youth sports explosion, I think is where you can trace all this. Like we're following these young people a lot of times especially hyper locally, like, you know, who the best athletes in your area are, and then you follow their college careers, but you've watched them play for a long time. It like the explosion is just not surprising to me at all. I, I, this, none of this is surprising. And I know some people are, you know, immediately the first thing a lot of people want to do is compare the sports, right? Is compare the sports. Well, you know, I, I don't could could they really keep up with the man? Like who cares? It doesn't matter. Watch an entertaining product on TV. Like at the end of the day, that's what this comes down to. And and a lot of the time, sports are played a different way. But what we saw last night in that Iowa LSU game was as entertaining a basketball product as anything I've seen this season. You you've got Caitlin Clark taking logo threes. I mean, this is. High level stuff with high level drama among the sports biggest stars. That's the kind of thing that you want. And so you go into NIL and you're going to see these athletes be more high profile. Social media, right? Social media is a big part of that. Social media is driven more so. I think, I mean, I don't have the exact numbers. It's a lot of both men and women, but it's, it's more women than men. It's, you know, we, we, in, in this business, you hear the term female switchable. What does that mean? You're trying to win the attention and the viewership of a female switchable. It is, you know, the woman head of the household that spends the money, right? That's, that's what that is. That's what everybody strives for. In, in what we do, like everybody's striving for that demographic. That's why you're seeing some of these, you know, Olivia Dunn and Caitlin Clark now and Angel Reese, why they're so valuable in the NIL space. And so what's that going to do? That's going to, it's going to intensify that profile to where we all know who these people are. They're household names now, right? And when they're household names and you get a perfect storm, like you got last night, you have the rematch. Right. We all remember Angel Reese pointing to the ring and Caitlin Clark's face, which created the best thing that could have happened to the sport last year because it carried over into this year. Then you get these two teams playing in a, you know, an elite eight final four national championship. It's sort of irrelevant. You get the two teams playing. You get both of the stars playing well and you have this perfect storm. And it, you can't watch that and say, yeah, I was bored by that. No, I mean, that was so good last night. I was just so proud that they delivered on the hype because they absolutely did. That was a blast. That game was fun. Jad, I'll tell you this. If you want it, like for me, I tuned away from the Rangers game last night for a few <laughs> innings. That's saying something, you turning away from the Rangers. I know. I, I don't yeah. turn away from, from ba early season baseball like this. I'm so excited for baseball. There's just about nothing will get me uh, to turn away last night. Jared 
Uh, by the way, you can you can watch us if you're listening right now on Facebook, on YouTube, and on uh, X, and you can leave comments there. That's how we get some of these viewer comments. Jared chimes in and said, to your point, Jad, the end of the Hutch game was absolutely awesome. Congratulations to Coach uh, and the Blue Dragons. It was televised on ESPNU last night. We are very proud of them, uh, the Barton men. Uh, our viewing area is well represented in the NJCAA postseasons uh, this year for sure. And, and hopefully a lot of those players are going to be looking to, you know, eventually get to the stage we're talking about now. But yeah, it was a great season for the Hutch Blue Dragons. And uh, we are very proud of them. Have you ever been on the men's side, Jad? Have you ever been up to just real quick the uh, the men's tournament up there in Hutch every year? Several times back. Uh, oh, it's so good. Back when I was in high school, one of the th one of the things I was uh, they of course a lot of the schools wouldn't bring their own like pep bands, and so what uh, they would do was they would oh, have nice. local high school pep bands come up. Yeah, that's cool to help like fill in in some of the where you know both teams were out of town. Nobody could bring a pep band. So we would go up there and we would play during that tournament. And I remember our director, he said, one of the reasons I always say yes to this is it's great basketball. He says, I love going up there and watching. It's just, a great atmosphere, right? Says, like that arena is cool. It's packed. It's fun. I yeah. love it. He said the effort level is so high because every single one of these guys wants that spot in Division One. It's like watching highlight reel basketball all the time because they are trying their hardest to move up. It's incredible. And they don't, they don't need get a platform like that all year long either, where all the coaches can just come in and check them out all at once. Either. Yeah, that's that's it is. You're right. It, there it's is fun. no holding never, back at that tournament. If you've never checked it out, and the women played in Casper, Wyoming, I don't know anything about that atmosphere. But if you ever have a chance to to go up to Hutch and watch that. I would, I would recommend it. It's a, it's a cool thing. I, I remember when I first moved here, I watched Samaj Haynes Jones playing for Hutch lighted up at that tournament. And I just was like, man, this is a really cool place to watch basketball. Oh yeah. It's that's a great venue. Arena wood everywhere. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that was, that was fun last night. I'm glad we got the final fours now set on both sides, the Yukon men and women uh, make it into the final four, which will be interesting. Uh, and of course, uh, you had that game, Iowa and LSU, last night, which was just a blast. So uh, kudos to them for delivering on the height. That was that was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, we got to talk about the Royals yesterday. Tommy will join us in just a little bit as well. We've got a big Wichita State baseball game coming up today, a little regional rivalry. OU's not as good as they have been in some years, but but you love to see the Shockers and the Sooners, the Shockers and the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Love those regional rival rivalries. Shocker baseball broadcasts are available live for free right here on KFH and on the Odyssey app. Tune in to KFH for Wichita State Baseball hosting OU at 545 this evening. You can simply download the Odyssey app and listen on the go as well. Just search KFH. It's Sports Daily. It's a Tuesday. We'll be right back.
Do this thing. Go! Sports Daily is on KFH. ESPN Bet is ready to take you through all the huge sports moments this spring. The exclusive sports book of ESPN has it all, including exclusive offers and promotions from Scott Van Pelt and Stephen A. Smith. From the playoff intensity to getting on the links and out to the ballpark, there's no better time for you to be a sports fan. Sign up today and new users get $100 in bonus bets for making any sports book bet. Download ESPN Bet today. What a play. Must be 21 plus. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In partnership with Hollywood Casino at Kansas Speedway. Terms and conditions apply. See app for details. Uh, an interesting time to the betting season. Looking at ESPN bet right now and just sort of looking at some plays today. Uh, baseball, I, I enjoy baseball. Uh, I enjoy betting baseball, but in small doses because there's so much of it. Um, so you've got some interesting little boosters up right now. I see one for Pete Alonzo and Ronald Acuna Jr. and Vladdy Jr. to combine for over one and a half home runs, uh, a boosted up to plus 700. Um, so right now I have this, I've been sort of trying to attack and I've, I've actually done pretty well this year, just sort of attack individual games or put a couple of together. I'll tell you a couple of things here that I like today, uh, as I'm checking out the ESPN bet, you know, website and app right now. So Royals today, you've got Alec Marsh and Colt Irvin 
I don't think I'm interested in the Royals on a straight win, which is at plus 140. I don't think I like the juice at plus one and a half, which is at minus 140. I kind of, and I haven't done this yet this year, I kind of like the over in this game, uh, over eight and a half runs. The Royals last night got to 10. And the reason I think I like it, hey, a couple of things today. I, I, I just don't know about this starting pitching matchup. The, the Royals have had decent, you know, starting pitching to good starting pitching in every game they've played this year. I'm not sure about Alec Marsh. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr. is sort of hot. Salvador Perez is, you know, regaining his form. So I, I think I kind of like that over just because, and then the main reason is because we're starting to see the true colors of the Royals bullpen to some degree, and I'm worried. So if you don't think that Alec Marsh is getting deep into this game, and I would say the chances of that are low, and you get into the Royals bullpen, we could see some runs give it up. More on that in just a second as we talk about it. But as a bet, kind of like that plus uh, that that over eight and a half there. Uh, a couple other baseball things I like today. I'm going to take the Rangers right now this year, anytime they're getting plus money. And they are getting plus money on the money line today. Um, Andrew Haney and Zach Eflin. I know Eflin is the Rays ace, uh, but plus money on that lineup right now, even with the loss of Josh Young last night, looks pretty good to me. And then the other one, if you want sort of a, uh, uh, an interesting play, the the Mariners and Guardians probably is the best pitching matchup of the day. You got the two aces, Shane Bieber and Luis Castillo. Bieber had a great first start for the Guardians. Castillo had a bad first start for the Mariners. But right now, you can get all the way up to plus 175 if you go minus one and a half for the Mariners. If you're looking for a little riskier play, I kind of like that one a little bit. See if we can't uh, get the law of averages to play out there. I, I like the Mariners this year. Uh, so minus one and a half, you got to give a little bit there, but plus 175. Those are sort of the three that I've looked at today. Uh, let's stick on the baseball theme here and talk about the Royals. Ken says that he thinks the Royals are going to need some offensive help for Wit and Salvi. I agree with you, Ken. Uh, they brought in Hunter Renfro. He's looking at Renfro. I, I will still say that it's the young guys that matter more. Vinny Pascantino is only hitting 143 this year. Obviously, they need him to pick it up in the middle of their lineup. Michael Garcia is the interesting player to me. Can he consistently, you know, his average isn't high, but he's got a couple of home runs. Can he continue the momentum from last year? I've really got my eye there. Hunter Renfro, I, I don't have, I, I told you this when they signed him. I don't have high expectations there. I mean, Melendez has been pretty good. This year wasn't good last night, but he's been pretty good. That would be certainly something we weren't expecting this year. But I look at Pascantino and Garcia more than I look at Renfro as guys who will ultimately, if they take the proper steps, make the big impact in this lineup. If not, they're going to have problems scoring runs all year. Witten Perez, great. I think Perez is going to have a resurgence. I, I could see him hitting 30, 35 home runs this year. Both of those guys had home runs last night. Um, I mean, Bobby Witt Jr. is playing out of this world right now, uh, which is no, which, which doesn't surprise anybody, right? But he is out of this world good. I mean, just couldn't be a better start to him offensively. And and look, Michael Waka did not give the Royals last night the sort of start that they'd seen in some of the other games, but he battled, right? He battled. He sort of had one bad inning there, struck out five in five innings, only gave up three hits, but he had the one bad inning, so it kind of bit him in the butt there. That's okay. We'll live with that. I think it was a decent start to his season. You had, you know, Schreiber and Stratton get off to a, a nice bullpen, and then it just fell apart on MacArthur, who I never heard of before last night. And then Anderson uh, it really let it go there late in the game. So, look, I, I, I don't know what will ultimately happen this season. I will stick to, though, the fact that I think, think we're seeing encouraging things from the Royals in the sense that the starting pitching continues to be serviceable, if not really good. Bobby Witt Jr. could not be off to a better start. Salvador Perez is off to a great start. Yes, they need more offense. And and yes, they're one and three, but they're playing really good teams. I'm not sure what we expect here. I think we're seeing positive signs. And I know that's going to wear out real quick if they lose these games continuously. I just don't know what they're going to do in the bullpen. We welcome back in Tommy Castor here now. Tommy, the Royals fall again last night. They were in it until it got to the bullpen. 
You saw home runs from, you know, the two best Royals hitters. Everything felt good. Waka battled one bad inning, but he battled through. And then the bullpen ultimately couldn't hold it. That's going to happen a lot this year, I suspect. I suspect they're going to continue to get good starting pitching. I suspect that, you know, their best hitters are going to hit. And I suspect they're going to lose a lot of games in the bullpen. And the reality is there's not just a whole lot they're going to be able to do out of that. I think the one thing that we will keep our eye on are any of these young pitchers who have not cut it as starters capable of reinforcing their bullpen. I think they might be, and I don't know where all those guys are right now in the farm system or in the big leagues, but I would start working a lot of those guys as relievers like right now to see if they can come up and help the big league club because they're not going to probably, unless there's injury, they're not going to help them as starters. Starting pitching has been really good. Well, yeah, and on top of that, too, I mean, what do you have to lose right now? Because the veteran acquisitions that you've made in the bullpen are not working out to start off the year. It is early. I told you yesterday I wasn't yeah, willing you yet pay to attention close the to door. But, but, you know, it, it's clearly whether you're talking about Will Smith or Nick Anderson or Chris Stratton, it's not working for these veterans that are in the bullpen here early on in the season. Do they have time to right the ship? Absolutely. But sure. you know, they're they're one and three when let's be honest, they could easily be four and oh. And, and that's just not the case. They've got to figure that part of it out because if we look back at you know, after this season is done and the Royals have lost 90 games, 95 games, you know, whatever, I think we'll be able to point to the bullpen as the Achilles heel of this team and part of the reason yeah. or a large reason why that's happening. So I think that, you know, especially now in, in the month of April, you know, the leverage is only going to continue to get higher from here. So I'm, I don't have a, a, an issue right now at all with the Royals, like you suggested, having some of these younger pitchers get some work in the bullpen because at worst, they're going to I do start exactly... The process. And worse, yeah. they're going to do exactly what the veterans are doing right now in the bullpen. And the upside is that they don't, and they eventually get used to it. And then you have a, a better bullpen as the season progresses. It, it will harm nothing. Right. I, you know, I I think you have to. I, I think you have to just understand, like. In a best case scenario the Royals don't want any of those young guys in their starting rotation because the rotation they have spent a lot of money on this off season is delivering. You've got, you know, Lugo and Waka and Reagan's the acquisitions going strong. Brady Singer is the guy we've always, at least I have, have had the, the most intrigue of, he feels like the one that could get it done. And then, you know, again, I don't, I don't know anything about, Marsh tonight. I, he he's the outlier. Maybe there's room for one. I'm not sure, but there's room for like four in the bullpen, and they have invested a lot in some of these young guys. Why not? And I would start the process. I, I'm not kidding. I would start it right now. I I think if you're talking about winning big league games in the future of this franchise, there's more gained by those players being really good relievers than trying to continue to develop them into good starters. I don't think that's going to happen. And the longer you wait, the more games you potentially lose this year. And this is a year you're trying not to lose as many games, certainly. Now, again, overreactions are a plenty, and it's it's fine. I, I think it's totally fine to start overreacting a little bit this early in the season. The reality is they're playing a brutal schedule, and not every offense is you know the Orioles that are going to be able to blow up your bullpen like that. But that, you know, you don't want this to spiral away either. Bobby Witt Jr. has been as good as any player in baseball through four or five games this year. You've had, again, good to great starting pitching in every every single game. You don't want to waste that momentum either with by piling up a bunch of losses. So the time is now to to fix it. And we'll see. We'll also see Tommy a little bit of Quattraro's chops here, don't you think? Like, how does he manage this thing? I, I th one of the best that's ever done it, Bruce Bochi. Won a World Series with a markedly bad bullpen last year. He is the bullpen whisperer, though. And he made a lot of mistakes throughout the regular season. But, man, you want to talk about having a feel for it? We both like Ron Washington. Ron Washington had such a good feel for that kind of stuff, just on his gut. Right? Ned Yost had some of that. Just trust your gut a little bit. We'll see if Quattraro has that. 
do you think this guy on this night can come in and get those outs, even though it doesn't make sense to the rest of us while we're watching? Like, why would you put him in? Sometimes those are gut calls, and, and we'll see if they can get that done. I don't know, but I do think we've got more positive signs last night. We really need them to win some of these games. I, I was right before you stepped in, Tommy. I was we were talking about you know a, a few baseball bets. I've actually enjoyed the baseball bets a little more than normal uh, this year. One that I really like tonight. I, I was looking. I, I kind of like the Royals over tonight for the for these reasons we're talking about. You got you know the back ends of both rotations and Alec Marsh and Cole Irvin. You've got star players for Kansas City hitting well at the moment. You've got one of the best lineups in baseball in Baltimore, and you got a bad bullpen in Kansas City. You know, like even if the starters do well, like there's a decent chance, right, that that, that the Orioles get into a lot of bullpen innings from Kansas City, and I kind of like that bet that they're going to give up some runs. So I like over eight and a half, and this game tonight is one of the bets I looked at. It, it just it makes sense to me until we see the Royals' bullpen do otherwise that there's a decent chance they're going to give up runs every night. Yeah, and I it's funny because – you know, as you're watching the Royals night in and night out, you know, I remember a year ago, um, it didn't matter what the game was. It seemed like w- one thing or another was not going you to You couldn't come even through. get to the bullpen last year. Right. Well, like the starting didn't... pitching was blowing it up. But right. even on the rare occasion, like if a, if it was a cool Reagan yeah, yeah, start yeah. or something, yep. you know, and it was good, then it just happened that the, the hitting didn't come through. You know, like one way or another, it was not working. I think that... I under and I don't think it's I'm not wanting to have a conversation about managing expectations for this season because I don't think that we're there yet. But I do think in the context of what we saw last season compared to the first four games of this season, although the Royals are one and three, this might be a moral victories type thing. That there are there are a lot more reasons, I think, to watch yeah. the Royals so far there than are, there were a I'm, year ago. It's frustrating. Having, Don't get I'm me wrong. Having the same, the same struggles. I think if we're being the most honest we can be, the 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 reality is they've played two really good teams to open up the year. I, I mean, that's that's what, if we're if we're trying to like take this and not overreact or underreact or anything else, you just look at it and you say, well, they played the Twins and now they're on the road against the Orioles. What do we expect out of those series? Right, win a game. If you can win the series, great, but win a game, don't get swept. I, I think that's fair. You know, and, and let me, I'm, I'm just going to pull up their schedule here because I, I know that they open the season with a brutal grind. Like it's not good. And I hope that that that's what we worried about. We, we talked about that when we were sort of looking ahead at the season. You hope that because they play a tough schedule, I mean, after the Orioles, they get the White Sox. You get four games at home against the White Sox. You know, that's where we don't need excuses. That's where you need to go win three or four or four or four. Because then after that, it's Houston. It's at the Mets. You've got the Orioles again this month. You've got the Blue Jays this month at the Tigers and the Blue Jays. You basically, you get seven games against the White Sox. And then every other team you'll play is good to playoff good. I think the Tigers are going to be pretty good this year. And that's a road series. So I don't think that's a cakewalk. That's, you know, so how do you do that? You got to pile up the the wins on the White Sox and you got to just try to hang tight in these other series. It is a tough, tough April schedule for the Royals. And then it, and then it, you know, it doesn't get a whole lot easier in, in May. The, the problem is the American League's really good, but like I'm looking just at a monthly level at the schedule and I mean, maybe there's a little relief in in June. July is certainly uh, much nicer on this, but it's going to be a minute. So we're going to learn a lot about this team and its character, I think, early because they are going to be, you know, underdogs from a betting perspective in most games that they play for the first two, three months of the season. How do you scrap in there? Can you get it done? You're going to face a whole lot of good pitching. And and every team in the American League get that. The American League is really good, Tommy. I mean, how many bad teams are in the American League this year? Like, if you looked at the American League right now, and you just, because in the National League, you can look across and see several, right? Teams that you can sort of not worry too much about. Don't think you're too worried about Miami this year. Pittsburgh's 5-0. and I get it. Not sure how much we'll worry about them long term. Uh, you know, but you look at Colorado should not be very good. San Diego will be a step back. You go to the American League, you've got Oakland, who we think will be bad. 
It's basically the Oakland White Sox and the White Sox. Those Oakland, are probably the two. The White Sox. I, I think that's it. And so, like, all of these games are going to be tight, right? And and my big thing with the American League this year is how much cream rises to the top and how much does everybody just sort of stay jammed in the middle. And and we'll see. That's going to affect what happens with the Royals. So, you know, this is all an expectation thing. I don't want to see the, the bullpen blowing games. Hey, that's the best bet for the Royals to win the AL Central is if there's a log jam in the middle. Absolutely. If you've got yes. somebody in that division – that rises to the top, the cream rises to the top. It, it's not going to be Kansas City, and so at that point, you're not looking no, at an I don't central think so. division winner. Uh, it, you're just not. So I think the Roy the best thing the Royals can be hoping for as the season progresses is that basically every team, at least in their division, is beating up on each other. You know, and you've got just a muddy mess, and it comes down to the final weekend of the regular season. Honestly, that's probably the best case scenario. And just like everybody had it right out of the gates, we've got Detroit, we've got Pittsburgh, Milwaukee without, you know, Corbin Burns or Craig Council, all unbeaten, right? That's how that's how we all saw this going, right? Uh, and the Yankees are unbeaten too, but it, it, it's very early is the point of that. I do think you can appropriately panic about the Royals bullpen, though, and try to fix that problem right now. Let's see some of these young arms in the bullpen, see what they've got. All right, uh, the number to call is 869-1240. Let's do it, Jad. Let's give away our first Wichita Wind Surge four-pack of tickets. We're going to do this all week long. The special thing today, though, is that the winner will get to throw out a first pitch at a Wind Surge game. Okay, that's today. That's right now. Let's make it interesting. Let's make it the oh, let's make it the third caller, Jad. 869-1240 right now. Four-pack of tickets and the opportunity to throw out a first pitch at a wind surge game. Good luck, everybody. Jad will get us a winner. We'll be back with more Sports Daily right after this.
All right, welcome back, everybody, and a big congratulations to our very first Wichita Wind Surge four-pack of ticket winner for the season. The special uh, condition on this one is you get to throw out a first pitch. We have our winner. Jared is our winner. Jared, welcome in. Congratulations. You ever done a first pitch before? I have never done a first pitch before. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about this one. Now, I, I got, like, are you going back to the mound? Are you going to Andy read it and try and move in front of the mound? Like, what's your strategy here? I, I think you got to try and go uh, President Bush and go from the mound, don't you? <laughs> You're damn right you do. Hey, you just you can't, put, you can't put it do. in the dirt, though. They, like, you can't nope. spike it halfway to home plate. That's the only condition we, if you throw it from the mound. We don't need Travis Kelsey out there. You bet you get up on that mound and you rock and fire, baby. You get that in there and and put a little heat on it too. I, I, I how much of a baseball player have you been in your life, Jared? Did you play through high school, little league? What 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 do we got here? Uh, played through high school, coached coached some high school ball. So I've I've thrown a BP or two in my day. Oh, you're good to go then. Yeah, let it let it rip. If you're feeling froggy, give them a little curveball or something. You'll have to. Uh, we'll have to. We'll, we'll stick with you. Let us know when that's going to happen because we obviously will have a special interest in that. But congratulations on the four packet tickets, uh, Jared. Uh, get get the arm in good shape now. You got plenty of time to to rev it up, ramp it up a little bit uh, because you, we need you out there showboating for us a little bit for the Sports Daily representation. I will do it. I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for the win. Thanks for listening. Watching Jared uh, gets that four-pack of wind surge tickets. We're going to give away more of those this week on the KFH Hotline, so stay tuned for your opportunity to win that as the wind surge. Get ready to get things going this weekend. Uh, certainly, we're excited to see a lot of new stuff happening out there. It'll be a lot of fun. Get good weather, we hope, this weekend as well uh, out for the Wichita wind surge to open things up. Uh, the Twins have had some injuries. We're going to see a lot of movement from the wind surge. The players will be good. The you know the product on the field, and I, we couldn't have asked for a whole lot more through three seasons now in Wichita. The Twins farm system has been good, but man, it's all about getting out there and having a hot dog and a beer, enjoying some baseball. I'm, I'm excited about that too this summer, Tommy. And uh, we'll be giving away those wind surge tickets throughout the season, so make sure you tune in for that. Speaking of baseball, again, a reminder, we do have Wichita State baseball tonight hosting OU. Be a little chilly, but no problem. If you decide you can't make it out to the ballpark, we've got you covered. That game, that broadcast begins at 545 here on KFH. And always a reminder, if you can't catch it on the air, you can listen to it as you go for free on the Odyssey app. Just search KFH. Tommy and I will be back. The Chiefs with some interesting storylines uh, not even related to Rashi Rice. We'll get you the latest on Rashi Rice and some roster movement. A little Chiefs football to lead things off in hour number two when we return on Sports Daily. Let's have a lot of mornings with Bob and Tom on 97.5 and 12.
Sports Radio, 97.5 and 1240 KFH. This is Sports Daily with Jacob Albrocht and Tommy Kester. All right, welcome back in, everybody. Hour number two on Sports Daily. Albrocht and Caster here with you for another hour. Jad Chambers producing for us. Having some fun uh, giving some things away in the last hour. We'll continue to give some things away. We'll give away some HTO later in this hour as well. We're going to have lots of opportunities uh, for you guys to win things by listening to us. It pays to listen uh, to Sports Daily here. So always stay tuned for that opportunity. We also have a video stream for you, Facebook youtube x you'll find us there you can reach out to us on social media we begin this hour talking a little kansas city chiefs a lot going on three different things here to touch on first and foremost rashi rice uh his attorney says that he is now cooperating with police mark donovan on kcmo talk radio 
yesterday said the Chiefs are essentially just waiting for this to play out. Of course they are. Um, there's lots of videos and pictures now out. The internet is a crazy place sometimes, but it's all out there now. We'll see. I still think there's the, you know, the big question that will affect a lot of this is was Rashi Rice driving the car uh, when it caused a, a six car pile up and sent somebody to the hospital. That's going to be the big difference here. It's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, he has an attorney, which, which means probably it will take longer. Uh, but we we need more info from police. We need like a police report, and we don't have that yet. That'll be the be next step, the next big thing, and then we'll be able to go on from there. Uh, but Tommy, there's, you know, again, if he was driving the car that was registered to him in all of this, and they fled the scene, there's there's going to be legal trouble. How much if he's driving? I think it's going to be tough to avoid. You know, at least a moderate amount of jail time maybe not maybe first time offender maybe he can get out of that but the nfl is going to suspend him for some amount of time i mean if you know if, if again if he's driving the car and all these things and whatever we'll see on all of that i think the chiefs probably need to be reactionary to some degree there are a lot of people that thought they needed to still attack receiver anyway i think they were done at receiver after hollywood brown a lot of people still wanted them to go get somebody um I think now they, they kind of have to. And again, we talked about it a little bit yesterday. I don't know that it has to be draft capital. I mean, that's fine. I, I think it's just going to find a veteran receiver just in case, right? Just in case. Help you bridge the gap through a potential suspension here. Did you read the statement that was released through his attorney yesterday? Because it it said absolutely nothing. I, I, read I, I don't know it. that I've ever it was no, <laughs> I've never was read an nothing. attorney statement that did say something. Like it was it just said he's cooperating. It was words on it a said. yeah, words on a on a paper that didn't mean anything. It didn't it didn't give any details. Obviously, I know you've got to be you've got to be careful with all of that. And and that's the biggest thing that an attorney is, you know, paid for. And, and my understanding, I don't know much about his attorney other than he's a pretty powerful attorney in Dallas. Uh, and pretty expensive attorney in Dallas. Um, but I do know that when I read that statement from his representation, I thought to myself, well, I just wasted, you know, the 10 seconds it took me to read that because it, it said no, it said nothing. And I'm like, that's always the case. Yeah, that's always the case. And so that's been the weirdest statement. thing about this entire situation is that very little has come out. And there been, it's not from a lack of trying. I've seen investigative journalists trying to get more information. I think TMZ is probably the main place where information is being disseminated about this sort of thing. You know, you careful with information from TMZ. They I'm have just saying, no checks and balances. But, but, but yeah. I, I'm saying like, I've seen reputable uh, journalists that have had a hard time breaking through to get yeah. any kind of information about this. The, the, the Dallas morning news, the television stations of Dallas, they're struggling with this. They, you know, Rishi Rice is not listed on any kind of jail records. There's no, you know, any kind of. We hasn't report. been arrested. Right? I know. Yeah, I'm just because they like, couldn't find. There's it. nothing that really can shed a lot of light on this, other than a dash cam video, and then some photos, and then after that, a, a statement from his representation. So everything yeah. is pretty tight lipped about it. It makes it hard to really, you know, be able to, I think, kind of figure out the next steps. I, I think you just have to, you know, th this is none of this is uncommon. It was a holiday weekend. He was not immediately available. He, if if his attorney's truthful here, and he is cooperating with police now, what will happen? I think, and let me just take a stab at this. They'll go through the initial stuff. They will decide at that point whether they need to actually arrest him, and he'll go through that process, and then he'll immediately bond out. But at that point, you'd have an arrest record. At some point, you'll get a police report on what police think happened based on their investigation. And then we'll begin the process of does this go to trial? Does you know, do you go through that entire process? Does he just say I screwed up? And then there's some sort of agree, you know, I, I don't know all that. But the timeline to me right now is not that surprising because it was a holiday weekend. And because they couldn't find Rashi Rice in the beginning, now they have and they'll go through their process. They'll continue their investigation. If they decide they need to arrest him, that he did something wrong, they'll do that. And he'll immediately bond out. But at that point, you'll have a little more concrete. All of that probably will happen within the next handful of days, um, as it normally would, by the way. It's not, you know, you're not looking for like a violent offender out there right now or anything like that. Um, all right. So just a quick look 
You brought up a couple of names yesterday, like Michael Gallup. Like right now, why can't the Chiefs go get Allen Robinson? And I know it hasn't been amazing for Robinson the last few years, but that's that's a guy who's been hamstrung by bad quarterback play forever. He makes a ton of sense. You can go get my, you know, you can go get Tyler Boyd right now to help bridge the gap. You've brought up DJ Chark. I like that name. Kendrick Bourne. I like that name. Heck, take a flyer on a guy like Michael Thomas. There are a ton of players out there that are probably affordable that could help you bridge that gap. And I think it's probably, I, I would like the chiefs to do that because the other thing about doing that is that can stick, you know, you draft another rookie. Now you've got to develop a rookie. Like you go get one of these veterans. And, and then even if let's say rice plays 80, 90% of the season, that guy's going to help you with Brown. I mean, now you're loaded at the position. So I think there's lots of free agents. I think they have the money to do it. That's how I would attack this issue and this challenge. Now, if I'm the chiefs, as I go to that list, I, I identify a few of those names that I like and say, who wants to come play for Patrick Mahomes play with Patrick Mahomes right now. Let's build your next contract. And that's where some of those, you know, Allen Robinson, Michael Thomas, those guys may be a little too old for something like that. And there's no reason Russell Gage, Kendrick Bourne, DJ Chark, any of those guys, right? Couldn't come. Heck, yeah. Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro out for there. A possession guy. Allen Robinson. Like, who doesn't want to come? OBJ. Who doesn't want to come play play with Patrick Mahomes? Because you can build your way to your next contract if you have a big year. So I don't think they'll have any trouble doing that. I suspect that they'll get one of those guys in there and they'll sign one of those guys very soon. There's no reason for me to think they would wait. Why would you wait? The Rice situation is not going to be good no matter how it works itself out because even if he was just a passenger, he fled the scene, right? If he was there, again, I, I shouldn't speak in if it was him that was there, but you know how that goes. So that's one thing the Chiefs are addressing right now. Uh, yesterday, Tommy, the Chiefs, it was last night, kind of odd timing on the deal. It's announced that they bring in Carson Wentz. I, I think that's pretty interesting. I like it. You know, I like, I like that idea as a backup. The chiefs have had a lot of success in identifying backup quarterbacks. I think, you know, Wentz has really fallen hard in his career, but he's a quarterback that can, you know, used to be able to anyway, move around in the pocket a little bit if need be, you know, stylistically there are, maybe a few similarities, but it's a guy that's just fine. It's a perfect profile of a guy you'd bring in to be a backup quarterback. I, I like that. I'm fine with that. And I'm fine rolling forward with that for the chiefs next year. Yeah. I don't have an issue with it. Um, you know, I don't want to see Carson Wentz get extended game time. I don't, because that's no. obviously going to mean that Patrick yeah, Mahomes, you don't want to see anybody, wanna see anybody get, get that. Yeah. Um, you know, but as a, as a backup plan is, you know, somebody that, you know, could step in, in a pinch, eh, that's fine. I'm okay with that. You know, and I, I think that I've maybe got a little bit more confidence in that than I did in Blaine Gabbert last year. Not that Gabbert is is terrible. Um, he's got you're a, saying you've he's got, got more confidence in arm. Wentz than you did Gabbert. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And you know, because in the small sample size that we saw Blaine Ga Gabbert last year, and this has been a knock on him throughout his entire career in the NFL, he struggles with accuracy. That's part of the reason why yeah. he was never able to latch on as a longtime starter and, and be viable as a starter in the NFL. And we saw that in small doses in Kansas City last season. Nothing against playing Gabbard. I'm happy for him that he got a Super Bowl ring in the same way that Chad Henney did. But I do think that going from a Blaine Gabbard to a Carson Wentz as a backup option is probably a step up. I use a step sideways. I I like and, and that's a that's a tip of the cap to both of those guys. I like I like the idea of a former high level starter being in the room in general, right? Just being around. What have you experienced? What have you seen? Because we know that Andy Reid is like a he's like got his cookbook, but man, he lets his players any he, and he wants his players to have all kinds of input. So experienced guys who have you know, attained high levels of success, even if it's in brief spurts, are probably going to be able to bring something to the table in the planning sessions and everything else. I think that that's the other thing is Carson Wentz, by all accounts, is a really high character guy. Chiefs can always use some of that. They've had some issues in that department historically. So the more of those guys that you can bring in, I think the better it is for the rest of the roster. So I like it. I like that move. I think it makes a lot of sense. And I think 
you know, even if he never plays a snap, which of course we hope he does not ever play a snap, I think he'll be able to add something to the team. Then we get the news today, Tommy. J.K. Dobbins is working out in Kansas City. And I'm going to tell you right now, I wouldn't love that as much as Hollywood Brown, but it would be a very well-received signing in my book if they figured out a way to get J.K. Dobbins in there on the cheap. He's a guy who has had absolutely terrible injury luck over his career, but is wildly talented, versatile, would make a ton of sense. It's basically a better version of Clyde Edwards Alaire for me. Uh, I, I would I, I would love to see them take that risk on him being able to ease his way back and maybe, maybe be able to stay healthy uh, because a lot of his injury stuff, it's not like nagging stuff. He's been, he's had like legs blown out and in those kinds of things. I, I would love that. I think it'd be good for Pacheco. And I think he would add something to the offense. I, I think he would immediately, if he's healthy, not just be like a, oh, we got to come in and replace Pacheco. I think you could figure out ways to use them both. And I think the more of those kinds of players you can have, the better. I would love it. Not as much as Hollywood Brown, but it would be up there on a list of things to do for me for the Chiefs that would just absolutely make this team better. Yeah, I'm okay with it. Um, again, as long as he stays healthy, that's the biggest thing. He may not. It, I mean, you know? he may not stay healthy, but I love it. Don't you think that's an appropriate risk for them to take? They're gonna have to. They're gonna have to bring in a young running back anyway. I, I feel like if Dobbins, you know, can't give them much of anything or nothing because of an injury, I think that's an appropriate risk to take because they have a little money to spend. <laughs> I think risk reward there is just right. I mean, you're I mean, talking I think it's about just right. you're talking about Dobbins, who I mean, he suffered injuries in high school. Yep. Uh, he suffered injuries at yep. Ohio State. Uh, you know, torn ACL in 2021, another knee injury in 2022, torn Achilles in 2023. Like it's been an every year thing, unfortunately for J.K. Bad. Dobbins. He's got a tremendous yep. amount of talent. There's no doubt about that. I think that for me. Uh, the only concern that I have, the only hesitation that I have with his injury history is you're dealing with a starting running back in Isaiah Pacheco who runs in a style in which more than likely injuries are going to happen. So what happens yep. if you've got an injured Pacheco, but then you try to go to a guy like J.K. Dobbins and he's injured as well? So I think that having They'll have a to, significant it's not amount enough. of depth is going to be extremely important. If you're going to bring on J.K. Dobbins and, and you want to go with that risk reward, that's fine. But you also got to make sure that you've got other pieces yeah, yeah. in that running back room I agree. to fill in. It, you're not going to, you're not rolling with a two man running back room. Right. There's no way. You probably need to go well, and they wouldn't, but you at least need to have somebody on the practice squad you can call up, right? A, a, and spell one of those two guys. But I also think you still, this team still needs a, a scat back, right? A McKinnon. Somebody to what, what is McKinnon's status, by the way? He's I don't know. Uh, uh, I haven't heard. It's been pretty quiet from from his camp on what you know his what's going to happen with him. Um, he's still a free agent. He's a free yeah, agent. So he's still out there. Yeah. I don't know if they'll bring him back. I mean, I know that he's he's thirty one. He's it's, got it's versatility. Unlikely. He's got versatility. There's no doubt about that. But I I think I don't know. I they I need just a think scat they're going to move on. They need a scat back. They do need that if it's not him and they didn't bring him back or somebody like that. And so you, I, I could definitely see a Pacheco Dobbins insert name there, right? Versatility, pass catcher, scat back type. And then I don't know if they want, they're, they're not going to want to carry four on the game day roster, but then you have to have your player that inevitably when one or both of Pacheco or Dobbins gets hurt, you just hope it's not at the same time you could then lean on that player in a pinch to, to get them up and in there. Um, I, but just stylistically and upside and probably cost JK Dobbins makes a ton of sense to me. And I would love that move for Kansas city. Perfect risk reward for me there. So a lot happening with the chiefs roster and you know, it's sort of interesting. They, the big splashes and everything, they didn't make the big splash initially, but I like the fit of their most high profile signing as much as I like any fit that any team has made in this offseason. That's Hollywood Brown. Now they 
you know, they're going to have to react again to Rashi Rice. And, you know, again, I, if, if you just separate the trouble and, and the bad things that are a part of that and look at if that's the thing that forces the Chiefs' hand to go get one of these veteran receivers on the cheap, ultimately it could be better for this team down the road anyway. And then, you know, you just – and we thought this would happen, right? A chance to three-peat, you know, a chance to play with Mahomes in this offense. There are going to be a lot of good players that the Chiefs are going to have an opportunity to get that they just can wait on. Because it's like, we have this in our back pocket. Like, you don't have a job. You want to come play here. It might be less than you wanted, but come back and earn it, right? Like, it, that, that opportunity will afford them more players, which takes us back to the draft, Tommy. It's April 2nd. We haven't talked about the draft in a little while. I haven't come off my contention that somehow through this draft, whether it's trading picks or drafting the player or trading up or whatever it is, it's time to be done trying to solve left tackle. Whether they're aggressive in the draft to go get a rookie, whether they use that pick to go get another veteran, which has not worked now for about five years, it's time. It's time to be done searching for that very important position. And I think they have the ammo, the firepower, and the flexibility now to be highly aggressive. If they identify any of these tackles in the first round, if they like any of them and think they're going to be that guy, because they haven't been such great evaluators of, you know, NFL players at that level, but college players that are going to project into good offensive linemen. And I shouldn't say that. Joe Tooney's been really good. But draft your draft your left tackle. If there's one there, again, if they like one, I don't care what you do, move up, you get him, solve that position because it's time to be done with that. They're going to have to pay two of these other guys, Tommy. Like they can't afford to keep you can't you can't have three or four of those kinds of contracts on your offensive line. They have got to be able to solve left tackle for a little while on the cheap because it's just not something if you're going to keep Smith and you're going to keep Humphrey and you're going to keep Tooney, I, like all if you're going to try and keep all these guys who are going to cost you a lot. You can't also try to pay a left tackle. That's all the, their entire salary cap is going to get tied up in their offensive line. As I've said before, generally speaking, I don't have an issue with them trying to solve a long-term problem at left tackle because I'm with everybody else. I don't like the fact that they've cycled through left tackles going all the way back to when they brought on Orlando Brown, when they went through that big revamp of the offensive line after the Super Bowl loss to the Buccaneers. I get it. It's been a revolving door, whether it's been Orlando Brown, and then they try to you know bring on Jawan Taylor, and that experiment clearly never works, but yet they're paying him left tackle money. They bring in Donovan Smith as a stopgap. I'm okay with a long-term solution. My only concern, my major concern, is if you are drafting, even if it is a first-round draft pick as a left tackle, I'm concerned about plugging in even a first-round draft pick as a rookie in week one of the regular season the most crucial position of the offensive line in trusting that to a rookie. That's my only concern. It, That's my only concern. Do you think it has to be? I, I get it. I totally get it. But I have the same concern with Donovan Smith or Wanya, you know, being there too. So, but at least we know think, with Donovan Smith, at but, least we know yeah. what he's capable of. We know his limitations. How much better do you think? How much better than Don, do you think Donovan Smith is than Wanya Morris right now? Uh, I, I think he is. He's probably. He's at least a click better. I mean, he's probably a different tier up, little I would bit. say. Yeah. Right. A little bit better. I, I'll give you that. But I would also say he's not that good. And so if you know you've got Morris, it, 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 again, this all depends on the evaluation of the players. They have to evaluate somebody that way. You don't get desperate and do it. You don't need to do that. But if they evaluate, if they're going through their process and they're like, man, we love this player. And you and you are feel strongly that they might slip down the board. You'd have to get past the Chargers, and then they could fall a little while, right? I I think that there's a real good chance that could happen. Then if you if they love somebody, just go get them. You, you, they don't necessarily have to start game one, although players at that position do that all the time in this league, and a lot of them find success. I think Morris could get you a month, right? As as close to Donovan Smith as, you, you know, you also remember you brought in Jawan Taylor to be a left tackle. Could he slide over there in a pinch for a few games to try and bridge that gap? I think that's possible, too. 
So I, I think it is the perfect time for them to do that and to finally solve it. If they don't love any of the tackles, then you don't get desperate. You just, you go do something else. Maybe you bring back Donovan Smith or whatever. But if they love a left tackle, I would be willing to say if you can come out of this draft and you have solved that and you do nothing else, you will have had a successful draft because they have got to be done trying to throw darts at that position. They've been too good at every other position on the interior offensive line at evaluating these guys. Like you've been to like, I, I just, I think they can do it. Just do it though. You got to commit to it. And you're going to have to be aggressive because that kind of player probably isn't falling down to the end of the first round either. You know, you might have guards and centers falling. You're not going to have left tackle probably falling like that in the draft. So we'll see. Uh, but that's the other thing that looms with the NFL draft with the Kansas city chiefs. Okay. On the way out here, let's give away a little HTO. Uh, we've given away wind surge tickets today and a first pitch opportunity. Congratulations to Jared again on that win. Now we'll give away a free iced tea from HTO and a free free rain coffee. Good for Wichita and East or West Wichita. Good for Derby. You can get your hands on both of those right now by being our first caller to the KFH hotline. 869-1240. Good luck, everybody. We'll come back. We'll get you a winner and we'll continue the discussion on Sports Daily.
congratulations to Pablo for winning some HTO on that giveaway. want to tell you that this portion of the program is brought to you by Crestview Country Club. Uh, a little chilly out there today for golf. This is the kind of day, I'll tell you what I get the most use of out there, Tommy. My wife and I love uh, on Fridays to head up there before the kids get out of school and catch them just as much of the happy hour as we can there in the uh, bar and restaurant. I love that bar. Um, I, I don't know. I've always said like, I, I, I don't spend as much time like at the bar as I used to in a younger life. <laughs> I was going to say I've you like any bar, said, I think. I do. But I, I think that at some point in my life, like a retirement, like being retired and being just like a happy hour bartender at a nice place would be so much fun. And it's a good example of the kind of bar I'm talking about, what they have there inside the, the restaurant area at Crestview. I love that. bar. It's the right size. It's the right vibe. Uh, but we love to to catch a happy hour in there on Fridays before the kids get out of school. You know, what's funny is they they also offer uh, something called the beer club, which I don't know if are you a part of the beer club? I'm not. I'm not in that. No. And I, I should, probably should be. So Again, you've, you've not got as much uh, time at the bar as I used Well, yeah. And, and so you get like special mugs if you're in the beer club. They're larger. Yeah. But my favorite thing about it is uh, if and I guess this is and this is not me. I want to be very clear about this. I'm not part of this. Um, cause I'm not sure it's really something you want to be super proud of, but I know that the, the people who drink the most, they like have personalized ones there, which, it, you know, yeah. that might be something that you, you hang your hat on cool. and that you're, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe also some that you want to take a look at yourself internally a little bit. Um, but oh, that's no, okay. No it's, it's fun. No, 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 it's no, a good time. No, and th listen, beer drinking is, uh, it's like a social phenomenon sure. now, like, being a beer snob and all that drinking the fancy one my we <laughs> uh, i've probably said this before so i like to drink beer like lagers and pilsners i i know myself and i know that i would like to have several beers if i'm going to drink beer so i can't roll with some of the things now that are my wife is not that she wants to have like one beer most of the time so she'll get like ipa or a hazy ipa Ugh. so this happens and it's, it's really emasculating all the time like we'll we'll order our beers and somebody will bring them over and without fail they'll hand me the ipa and they'll hand her the light beer <laughs> come on everybody it's 2024 can we stop the stereotypes here and then i gotta switch them and it's really embarrassing and all these things but yeah a uh, great bar there at crestview uh, we appreciate their support of the program a uh, great time to check it out and check out what we're talking about. Um, Tommy, I, I you sent this over on the Big 12 basketball moving the Mexico game, right? Is that is that what's happening? The KU-Houston-Mexico game now has to move? Yeah, that's correct. So the Big 12 conference came out with a statement this morning. It was you know a big deal when it was announced from Brett Yormark that uh, the Big 12 would be playing a handful of games uh, in Mexico. And the initial game was supposed to be Kansas and Houston in 2024. So it was going to be, you know, in the 24-25 season. Uh, now it looks like that is going to be delayed uh, a year, is what the Big 12 uh, is saying. So uh, there's really not a reason from when I read the statement, there's really not a reason as to why. They say today the Big 12 announced it will delay the launch of Big 12 Mexico with a new target date of 2025. Since Big 12 Mexico was announced, a variety of major initiatives have been added to the conference's agenda, headlined by the onboarding of four new member institutions. The Big 12 will continue to build its brand in Mexico through its broadcast partners and remains enthusiastic about bringing the Big 12 to Mexico. So they're basically putting it on the fact that they've got four new teams that they've got to focus on as opposed to expanding the branding into Mexico. Yeah, I don't know how big college basketball is in Mexico. I have no idea, but I would guess it's not a tremendous amount. And that's a long-term project. I think in the short term for the Big 12, there are bigger priorities. So I totally understand this. They have got to capitalize right now on what's happening with college basketball. We know that the men's brand is and always has been vastly underrated. The tournament in which it plays tells us that. The women's game is exploding. I started, Tom. You weren't here. Like, 
I'm over trying to compare the women's game to the men's game and like justify and like beg you should watch this and all that. No, like we're done with that. Like the women's game is there, man. It's right there for you. And if you watched any part of that game last night oh, between at least Iowa and LSU, I did Both not watch the second incredible. game. Yeah. I didn't I didn't get to watch the second. That's that was time it was I had to put kids to bed. I use this example for Jad Tommy. Like and I don't mean this. This isn't even a joke. This is legitimately like for me. And I've always been a fan of women's basketball. Big deal at the college I went to. I've covered high school basketball my entire professional career. How could you not love it? Right. So I'm already a fan, but it's not like I consume it all the time from a television experience. But I'll tell you last night, the hype of that game, the, the Clark Reese drama and revenge piece of that. And this is, I, I don't, this isn't me trying to be funny. Like I, I turned away from the Rangers game for a little bit and there is nothing. I mean, nothing that makes me turn away from a Rangers game early in a season while I'm still so excited for baseball. And I had to, I was leaving the office and I watched it for a minute and everybody in the newsroom was just like locked in because the game like just exploded out of the gates. Right. And it's just like knocking down all these threes and Reese is dominant and all this stuff. I'm like, I gotta get home. I gotta turn that game back on. Like I, I'm going to have to take a break from baseball for a minute. And I did, and I didn't regret it. It was incredible. The popularity is already there. It's not growing. We don't need to talk about it. like it's there. Like the product is already there. So if you're the big 12 and you're trying to capitalize on all this stuff, man, go capitalize on all this stuff. We saw K-State's women sell out games all year long, right? We saw KU women last year in the NIL sell out games on their way. Like, people are ready for it. It's there. You just need to make sure the Big 12 is in a position to have the best product. That's what the Big 12 needs to focus on now. Make sure that, you know, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and all these, make have them come play in the Big 12. Big 12's got a rich history of women's basketball. In fact, our very own Taylor Robertson's three-point record, which she set, was one of the records Caitlin Clark beat last night, all-time threes. That was She was right up the road in McPherson playing not that long ago. So uh, it's there, and that's got to be a part of this Big 12 focus yeah. too. They have got to focus right now on capitalizing on that momentum for the way this sport has exploded. And then you add in the drama of Kim Mulkey, who is, you know, the person that everybody yeah. loves to hate, you know, and, and sure. just the way that, you know, she approaches everything. I mean, I don't think it's a hot take to say that it, as far as comparing the tournaments this year, and I know it's apples and oranges and hard to do. I think the women's tournament's more exciting than the men's tournament. Not that the men's no, tournament I, I is not. I'm not saying the men's tournament I, is not, but you've it's got. Not, I think that's unfair to both. I think they can both be awesome and just both be awesome, right? It was a Monday night. There weren't any men's games. Guess what? We got incredible basketball. We got more of it, right? Like, I, th I think that's the part for me. I don't know if it's more or less exciting. I mean, that individual game was as exciting as anything I've seen in March. I, I yes, I agree with that. But what, what, in fairness to to the awesomeness of both, I think we just let them both be awesome, and th the Big Twelve can do that. Don't you think they both bring separate value? Like we can stop trying to sort of bundle it in and compare. No, I mean, look at the NIL space. Who are the most highly paid athletes all across the country? Capitalize on it. Utilize them both if you're Brett Yormark. That's that, that's where I'm at with it. I think it just gives us more product for him to sell and be better for the league overall. I'm okay with that. I get that. I I I totally understand where you're coming from. But if if you're just from a viewing experience, I'm not saying that the women's game is better. I'm not saying that the men's game is better. It is apples and oranges and, and different kinds of, of basketball. But for me, I can only speak for me, me personally. What I've watched from the women's game in the tournament this year is more fun for me to watch than the men's. Doesn't mean that the men's game is not fun, but just the way that the games have played out. You know, there have been some close ones. There's no doubt about it. But just all the drama in the women's game right now and the way that you've got these stars, whether it's Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese or Paige Beckers or Juju Watkins or whoever, you've got these high profile stars. And I know the men's game has that too. And guys like Zach Eady and, and Dalton Connect and others, there's no doubt about that. But man, like the women's game this year, you've kind of got lightning in a bottle. It's this way all the time, but it's really, really good this year. 
I don't. I yes, it's really it's better than it ever has been. That's because the two biggest stars have matched up in the tournament the last two years. Caitlin Clark has been the biggest basketball period star across college sports this season. It's not close what she's done, and that adds to it. I mean, that was the first full game. I watched a little K State. I was on the road when they were playing, so I watched as much of that as I could. Kate, it, it's it, you just cap yeah capitalize on Clark and Reese. I mean, and there have been star players forever. Not like these two and not like this little rivalry that's been created. Let's go to Dave. Wants to talk some KU hoops. Uh, Dave, what's on your mind? Welcome into Sports Daily. Well, I was wondering maybe Tommy might know. Uh, any more information about this Florida transfer? I, from what I've read, and it's been very little, it didn't make me really do backflips, but I didn't know if you had any more information that's already been out. Yeah, what I know about Riley Kugel, and thanks for the call, Dave. I know that uh, you know that was an announcement over the weekend that the Jayhawks were bringing in Riley Kugel as a transfer He's a he's a Florida kid, former four star, um, you know, athlete coming into Florida. He's from, or at least spent some time in the Kansas City area. And I get your point when you say it doesn't make you really do backflips, but he's he brings athleticism, and that's I, something I that the should. Jayhawks has. They, they've really obviously struggled with watching them from last season. They didn't have the athlete, and especially when Kevin McCuller went out, you saw that was lacking. So this is something that I know that there are some scouts that they view some NBA upside for a guy like Riley Kugel. Uh, and if you're looking for a coach who can help coax that out of him, it's probably Bill Self. So I do think it's a it's a good addition in the transfer portal. I don't think a guy like Riley Kugel, Jacob, is going to commit to the Jayhawks without some sort of uh, understanding that he's probably going to start next season. That's my That's my guess. But I don't know that for sure. I would envision him as a starter or a minimum rotational player, which yeah. they've desperately needed. Know this, Dave. He was an SEC all-freshman his freshman year. Basically had the same year last year, even a slight step backwards. He is the perfect Bill Self candidate, sort of like Kevin McCuller, to take that next step and become a really good player. Like an Ochai uh, I, I, or a Jalen Wilson yep. or somebody, and I, somebody like and that. I, and I think, yeah. I think what you'll see there is – and we'll – like the Nick Timberlake experience experiment didn't necessarily work because I think most of us felt like the athleticism wasn't quite up to up to speed when the three pointer wasn't falling. So you'll probably see more of this. The one thing it did point out that like stood out to me, Tommy, pretty similar to a role I envisioned potentially Colby Rogers having on the team. So I don't know if that makes it less like I think it probably does make it less it likely does. that they'd be in on Colby Rogers, but it's that kind of player. Right? Who can go get you 10 points a game, which is what he gave them at Florida? Who can provide you the athleticism to be able to defend at the level they need? And who has the upside? That's why they go get a guy like that. Is he going to be at the top of transfer list? I don't think so, but that stuff doesn't matter anyway. It's just about going to, they don't, they're not going to need a lot of that if they return what we think they'll return. They need better well, fits. And yeah, and let's be have. real. Like when, when they lost Kevin McCuller, they were probably one of the least athletic teams in the country. Totally. I mean, there's yeah. no outside of KJ Adams, they weren't athletic. They weren't athletic in any any way, shape, or form. They, they got more athletic with this transfer. Yeah, and they need experienced athleticism that doesn't come in and turn the ball over ten times either. So, uh, good call there, Dave. Appreciate it. KFH hotline remains open. Pablo, Jared, winners on the program today. Stay tuned this week, all week long. We'll have lots of chances to win different things. Uh, we'll come back. Sports Daily. It is a Tuesday. It's been. Crazy Tuesday, but we love it. Great time of year. We'll be back with more right after this.
ESPN Bet is ready to take you through all the huge sports moments this spring. The exclusive sports book of ESPN has it all, including exclusive offers and promotions from Scott Van Pelt and Stephen A. Smith. From the playoff intensity to getting on the links and out to the ballpark, there's no better time to be a sports fan. Sign up today and new users get a $100 bonus in bonus bets for making any sports book bet. Download ESPN Bet today. What a play. Must be 21 plus gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER in partnership with Hollywood Casino at Kansas Speedway. Terms and conditions apply. See app for details. I brought up a couple baseball bets, Tommy, uh, while you were away that I like tonight. That Royals over. Um, I'm going to take a chance on the Mariners with Luis Castillo bouncing back tonight, getting some plus money on their minus one and a half, some big plus money, almost two to one uh, there at ESPN Bet. And then I... And you can call me a homer all you want, but it's been good so far this year. I, there aren't going to be a lot of games where the Rangers are plus on the money line that I don't take the Rangers on the money line. Uh, Andrew Heaney on the mound tonight against the Rays, plus 130. I'll take that as well. Uh, your Braves, you haven't really, I haven't really locked in on Braves. I don't like any part of theirs tonight. That You got to give two and a half runs to get to, to get to essentially even money. Against the White Sox, that's pretty wild to know how heavily they're favored tonight over uh, the White Sox. You comfortable giving two and a half runs on the road for your Braves in a win like that? You can't take them on the money line. It doesn't make any sense. Well, but, I mean, whew, the, that's, that's, the, the White Sox are really bad, and the Braves are, are really good. And they started the they series are. yesterday. It was a, a random Monday afternoon day game in Chicago, uh, and Charlie Morton pitched. Uh, I think the game only went eight innings because of rain and the Braves beat them nine, nothing in eight innings. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I get it. And that's why, that's why the lines are where they are. I mean, the, the Braves are pretty bad uh, or the, the White, White Sox are pretty bad. So I, I get it. I, I wouldn't feel that uncomfortable placing a bet for the Braves to cover that number. It, I mean, I wouldn't bet the other way either. I'm not going to take the White Sox like that. I love baseball home run bets. I love like $5 baseball home run bets. It's one of my favorite things uh, to do. I, I just, I think they're a blast. So like, for instance, Corey Seager doesn't have a home run yet. Plus 290, five bucks. Why not? That, uh, baseball's, I, I'm still trying to learn it. I'm still trying to understand it and find the best way to do it. I, one thing I have learned is small amounts. It's not the same as football bets, right? Like I learned that right away. Remember when we first got sports betting in Kansas and baseball was first up? Like it was like we we kind of got a teaser with a little bit of baseball before we entered that football season. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about a learning experience oh, sure, yeah. real quick? Yeah, it's like, well, we got to bet something. We got betting now, and it's like trying to attack baseball. No, I, I think uh, I think I've learned some lessons, but I do like it. I think it's fun. Um, so uh, uh, you know, we'll 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 go through a few each day. Try to sprinkle a little bit here and there. I at really some plays that we like. By the way, I really like the the Yankees and Diamondbacks matchup tonight. As far as pitching is concerned, you've got Zach Gallen on the bump for the Diamondbacks. Nestor Cortez pitching for the Yankees, and uh, I know that there have been you know pretty high hopes for Nestor Cortez this season. Um, you know, Yankees are, Cortez. Yankees are one and a half run favorites in the game. I, I do kind of like the Diamondbacks to cover that. I think it'll be a close game. I think it'll be a low scoring game. Um, so the over under is nine. I kind of like the under in that game. Um, so that's one yeah. that I, I am keeping my eye on. So now would you take, you wouldn't take plus one and a half of the Diamondbacks right at minus 200. Just take them on the money line. You mean I take them on the money line. I mean, you're not getting plus yeah. money on the money line for either team. I mean, you rarely do, but you're getting baseball close, matchups. To, you, you're, you're getting, getting close, close to it. To it. Yeah. Um, so I'd take the Diamondbacks on the money line. Probably the under would be my play in that game. So last year, and again, this is a learning experience that you can have with us right here on Sports Daily. Uh, last year, I was like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go find a bunch. I'm going to go find like plus money on the money line that I think could happen, right? And and just see because anybody can beat anybody on any given day in baseball. So like if I you know by that strategy today, well I'm actually doing that with Andrew Haney and the Rangers. But uh, in a wider glance, it would be like oh Casey Mize against the Mets on the road. I'll take that plus money. This year, what I'm trying to get a better grasp of is the actual spread and betting. That's what I'm trying to so. That that is where it gets pretty interesting in in liking the favorites, but you got to give two runs essentially, and so that's pretty interesting. I, I'm I'm trying to find, 
I, I don't know. And, and it's probably a mix like, like the Rangers with that offense. Like I'm going to take them plus money just about any time I can get them this year. I wouldn't do that with every team. Obviously JB chimes in on this and says he tries to pay attention to weather uh, with betting over under runs on games. That's interesting. If it's cold or the wind blowing in less scoring still tough. It is tough. It's always tough. You know, Vegas is they build billion dollar casinos for a reason, but I, I, um, yeah, I have not paid any attention to weather in baseball, quite frankly. And I don't know what the weather in Baltimore is. As I tell you, I kind of like the, the, the uh, Royals over today It's probably cold. Um, I just, that's a bet against the Royals bullpen right now, as much as anything else, but you know, we'll, we'll experience this all together. Uh, if you have any tips on baseball, cause I do want to do a little more of that this summer. Uh, it just, you know, just small amounts here and there, uh, but we'll see, uh, Royals play tonight. You will, they're going to, they're going to conflict, uh, with Wichita state baseball tonight. So you're going to catch Wichita state baseball tonight, uh, on KFH taking on OU, but Tommy, the Odyssey app, right, is a pretty typical place to be able to get all of this stuff uh, when we have these sorts of conflicts. You know, the app is a good place to go in those scenarios. Yeah, it is. I mean, because you've got access to all of those games, uh, you know, in one place. And so, you know, if there is Shocker Baseball, you know, which there is tonight and, and you're missing, you know, any part of the Royals game, it's just pretty simple. You can download the Odyssey app. You can also download the MLB app and, and have access uh, you know, to Odyssey uh, games there as well with the Royals in action tonight. So a couple of different options there to be able to check out those games. Uh, so we got you covered either way, but the Shockers OU tonight, you know, OU's not as good as a lot of years, but I think, you know, the weather's going to suck. That's going to make it tough. Listen with us. Like, if you don't want to get out there and freeze your tail off tonight, just, just listen with us. We'll have you covered tonight. Uh, <laughs> we, we got you. That game. Free game coverage begins at 545. All right, we'll come back. We'll put a bow on everything when we return on this Tuesday of Sports Daily. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a Samsung Galaxy A14 included when you buy an extended silver unlimited plan. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Switch to Straight Talk. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. Taxes and fees apply. Where can you get the best pizza, pasta, hoagies, and salads? Pizza John's in Derby. Since 1969, families have been dining at Pizza John's. Stop in at 208 South Baltimore Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. or order online. Pizza John's, purveyors of round meals and flat snacks. Tax season is here. Are your forms, calculations, and stress piling up? Take charge of your tax situation today by going with Market Tax Services. Our team of CPAs and enrolled agents are ready to help you manage your documents, returns, deductions, and more at our downtown or West Wichita offices for your convenience. Market Tax Services is here for all your tax needs. We look forward to meeting with you. Call us today at 316-803-1040 or learn more at markettaxservices.com. Does your parking lot or driveway have potholes or other liability concerns in need of repair? Call 316-990-5855 today for a fast, free estimate. Pave the way are the leaders in the pavement industry, specializing in asphalt and concrete paving, pavement repairs, and routine maintenance. Call 316-990-5855 today. You'll be glad you did. Pave the way. Kick in asphalt every day. I'm going after the deals at Crazy J. Crazy J's Furniture and Sleep Shop is Wichita's favorite furniture and mattress store for three generations and counting. Offering the largest in-stock selection of quality name brand mattresses and bunk beds and so much more at the best prices in town guaranteed. Living room, dining room, bedroom groups and accessories with delivery, setup and special financing available. Open seven days a week, east at 1026 South Oliver, west at 604 North Tyler. Go see them today. 
It's the 16th Annual Independent Living Resource Center Golf Classic at Sand Creek Station in Newton, Friday, May 10th. We welcome players of all abilities and promise a great day of golf at one of the best courses in Kansas. The tournament starts at noon with lunch before and a steak dinner after the tournament and beverages. There'll be awards and chances to win great prizes along with a live auction. Proceeds from the tournament benefit ILRC's Greater Expectations Autism Program for young adults with autism. For more about the tournament, visit ILRCKS.org. DQ presents the sound of BOGO free blizzard treats in the DQ app. It's the sound of downloading the DQ app, redeeming the sweetest BOGO free blizzard deal, telling all your friends, and heading to DQ. For BOGO free any size blizzard treats only in the DQ app for a limited time, download it today. At participating locations, limitations apply. DQ. Happy tastes good. Check engine light on? Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly Veriscan. It's free. Ask for O'Reilly Veriscan today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. <laughs> Replace your worn out brakes and save now on Brake Best Select. Brake Best Select Pro are import direct brake pads and rotors only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. The KFH Studios, powered by Devon James Injury Lawyers. Call 888-8888. That's 888-8888. Juco Women's Basketball, the 49th version of the National Juco Tournament in Casper, Wyoming. Championship game last night. The defending champion, number three seed, Northwest Florida State, taking on the number one seed, undefeated Hutchinson Community College. Hutchinson got a big call from the refs late in the game that led to three straight free throws. It got the game into overtime, and then the Blue Dragons dominated in the OT, beating Northwest Florida State 88-80 to in overtime. The Hutchinson women win their first ever national title in their 50th season of program history, finishing undefeated too, 37-0, and perfect season. The only other time that the Hutchinson women had a national championship was the cross-country team, and that was 22 years ago. The Hutchinson Community College women's basketball team undefeated national champions with an eight-point overtime win last night in the JUCO National Tournament. I'm Ted, the Sportshead. We have your front row tickets for the biggest games. Number one for sports and sports talk. 97.5 and 1240 KFH. Wichita's most listened to sports radio, 97.5 and 1240 KFH. All right, that's it for us. Jam-packed day. Lots of giveaways. We're going to continue that. It's going to be a fun spring for us here on Sports Daily. Uh, we've got Final Four set on men's and women's basketball. We'll get more on that throughout the week. More giveaways coming for you as well throughout the week. Jim Rome follows us here. Bob and Jeff locally 2-4. to four. Zach Gelb for a little less than two hours. And again, Shocker Baseball and OU right here on KFH at 545. Tommy, enjoy the Tuesday. That sounds good. We'll talk to you tomorrow. For Tommy and Jad, I'm Jacob. See you then.